welcoming you into episode six of the USFL podcast. Zach Kyleman in here, as always, alongside my good buddy, my good co-host, my good pal, the ref, Stefan Raychuk in here. Stefan, good to have you on again. Good to be doing another show. You know, we're getting stuff slowly but surely leaking out. Now, we had the big shebang a few weeks back. Now we're just getting some pieces here, waiting for the next big thing the league officially drops. That's what we're going to be talking a lot today. How are you doing this week, bud? Doing pretty good. It's been a fun week. It's been a great week, a slow news week, kind of like last week, but we have some things to talk about. There's some things that happen after the show, like right after we recorded. So it's kind of good that yeah. we waited because now we have a little bit more insight. But overall, I, I, we're starting to see the buildup, and I, I think we're getting ready for some big news, either from the XFL or the USFL. One of them's coming soon, so that makes me happy. I know. We're, we're getting there. Alt football news is going to be the hot commodity, even with the Super Bowl looming as we're recording this show. Uh, that is going to be the hot commodity here coming in the few weeks that we have ahead in February. Let's get into this for some housekeeping items before we really dive into the meat of this episode. First things first, if you haven't followed us on social recommend you do that by now we're on facebook we're on instagram we're on twitter we're going to ramp up that instagram by the way tiktok some point we'll get the head of that you know usfl podcast for all those recommend you like or follow us on those and if you are watching this on youtube already recommend you subscribe and hit the bell because just like the ref has said and like i'm going to keep getting better at saying hitting the bell builds morale so please be sure to do that sign yourself up see i'm getting it down it, it takes practice, <laughs> but I'm, I'm learning from you on getting, getting it down. I knew I was going to do it, but seriously, guys hit the bell, builds morale. You're always, you'll never miss a video doing that and hit subscribe. If you enjoy the videos and you're watching every week, why aren't you already doing that already? Not to insult you, just telling you, you might want to just do that, get the notifications and whatnot and get the clips. Maybe you don't like watching the whole episode. Anyway, into this too. Last thing, things on our list are some goodies giveaway, by the way, speaking of that subscribe account, if we hit once we hit, not if once we hit 500 subscribers, we are going to do a nice giveaway. We've been doing that for hundred subscribers and 250, 500 is a nice big one. You may have heard that April 16th is the kickoff game for the USFL. The stallions will be hosting the generals in that game. We are going to give away two tickets to that game and merchandise of your choice, a hat or a t-shirt of the USFL's choosing, which by the way, some new merch might be coming soon. We'll talk about that on this show. So that might be part of your get together. Recommend you hit the subscribe count so you can be part of that. You got to do that. And also check out our discord. That's the other way you can get on and be part of this group as well. Please check out those. That's pro football's discord too. And finally, if you're interested in any retro gear, say you can't find what you like on the USFL shop. Here's the deal. We got a great offer with our buddies over at Royal Retros. These guys do an excellent job with a lot of older alternative football league merchandise. They build, build and customize this stuff themselves. Go over to their website, royalretros.com. Check out with whatever merchandise you like and use the promo code USFL podcast. Again, that is USFL podcast in the promo code section. Save 10% off your entire order. Sign it up. I'm just saying. That's I'm, hey, got to get it all out of the way. I mean, <laughs> you know I might, I might have to use that promo code myself. I'm not going to well, lie. I've, I've got, I got some things bookmarked. Uh, it's going to happen soon. You know, I have a regular life paychecks got to line up. You know what I'm saying? I, I got, I got items. I'm with you. you. Know? I'm with you. They don't have, they don't have blitz items on the shop. I'm going to get myself a Chicago blitz shirt or something. It's going to happen. I'm just telling you. There we go. It's going to happen. Hey, Let's get into this. Before we jump into it, actually, one thing, right, one thing, right. I'm sorry, I, I'm, you know, this is what I do, <laughs> Zach. I'm sorry. And everybody at home, you're going to get used to this. I hijacked the show. I, I sent things <laughs> off the rails. One thing I do want to mention, I do want to talk about spring stock one more time real quick. Before yes. We jump into thank this. Thank you. Thank you very much for pausing me on that. That is very true. So again, beyond winning two tickets, if you're the lucky subscriber, spring stock you can come hang out with us we have we'll have a link down in the description there's some more details as more details come about we're going to be updating that page so that's going to be your one-stop shop for everything spring stock and if for some reason you've been living under a rock and you don't know what spring stock is i mean it's like the woodstock of spring football all of oh, us yeah. alternative spring fall fans what are we doing april 16th we're heading down to birmingham we're heading down to Birmingham, sweet home Alabama, and we're going to have a good time. And you know what? We want to be a part of that good time. So part of Spring Stock, we're going to have some giveaways, right? We're going to yes, have food. We we're going to have drinks. Again, non-alcoholic. But if you do want to drink, BYOB. I just don't want to be responsible for that. Full transparency, but live podcasts. I know 
Again, we're going to be there, so you'll see a live USFL podcast. I know Jim Mernier. Did I get that right? Did I practice it well? Mm-hmm. Yes, you did. Sign you, me up. You aced it. You Sign aced me it. up. I'm going to screw it up later by accident, but I got it right this time. He's also coming down. Tron Hawkins from This Is The USFL Podcast. So we know there's going to be some fun to be had. But come and hang out with us. Get signed up. And if you are coming, use the hashtag Springstock on all the social media and let us know. We want to know. It's going to be fun. Mm-hmm. Now, now, after we get that piece out of that, that was important. I, <laughs> good stoppage yes. there. Now we resume play. Let's get into some details for news this week or stuff really as we kick off. Things that we got that hit our newswire as we were recording last week. So uh, we had a, a little birdie uh, <laughs> kind of drop a bunch of stuff on the pay structure as well as other behind the scenes elements of the contracts for USFL players insider, Mike Mitchell on Twitter dropped a lot of, uh, nuggets. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying a gold mine of nuggets for people that were really wanting to know what is uh, going on. How does this all work? You know? So here, here's the deal. We're going to go through this whole pay structure, some possibilities for pay, um, what practice squad and uh, standard active roster players going to look like and a few elements of the contracts and handbook that, Eh, I don't know. We have, we have some points on, let's just do the pay structure first. So details for USFL player contracts are as follows. So we'll start with training camp. Training camp is a specific pay scale per week. So starting March, March 21st, they are going to have a $600 per week pay for anyone that is in training camp at that time. That's any of the players that may that are drafted from the player selection that get on those rosters and then make it through that roughly month period Every week, they're going to get $600 a week. Once they get to actual in pay, practice squad players will make $1,500 a week. Active roster players, $4,500 a week. Now, these are some bases. We don't know, like, for example, specialty players or quarterback ratings yet. We're talking like base ratings for guys that are just on the roster. Mm-hmm. So we don't know any specialty things. We know bonuses, by the way. Here's mm-hmm. some bonus nuggets. Um, Bonuses, for example, $850 per regular season or playoff win, and that's for both practice and active roster members. Championship winning players. Now, the team that wins the championship, all their players on the active roster get a $10,000 bonus dropped right into the bucket. Dude, and that's pretty sweet. Winning. Yeah. <laughs> that, is, uh, that is pretty nice, um, considering that if we're talking 10-week total without wins, for, say, for example, active roster, it's 45, it's 4,500 and that's without some certain things removed. Mm-hmm. So you're instantly dropping in like I'm off the top of my head, a little under a fourth of your right. salary is coming in all of a sudden, if you win a championship plus of course, any win bonuses too. uh, practice squad players will feel even better for that. They're making 1500 if they're on all 10 weeks and this is without wins Mm -hmm. as well. Now that could change depending on injuries. Some might move up, you know, some could move down 15,000 moves are happening. 15,000. Thank you very much. And that's 45,000 as well for active roster. Yes. (laughs) Got to keep that clarified too. See, I'm paying attention here though. Nobody could say the ref's not paying attention because I know the chat and the descriptions or the descriptions, the comments, ah, oh, man, it's a rough day. They're paying attention. So I'm, I'm there. I'm catching the, I, again, I'm the pitchfork and fire just detractor, if you will. I, I, I try to be the anti-magnet. Anyway, go right. on. You're like grading my paper. You're like grading my paper right now. It's like this is a, uh, this is wrong. This is a spelling error. This is. Uh, did you mean a different number? Like leaving those questions you see at yeah. the end when you get the paper back. You know, half check mark. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. That's what you're doing to me right now. Okay, a few more things. Um, max possible salary. So this is with all win bonuses. Say you win the entire season undefeated. You go through the championship. You know, and we haven't taken out any money from said items we're going to talk in a second, $75,000 per player. If you get all this stuff, right. Almost 76, almost 76. It's right on the cusp. Like about 75, 750 is what I'm referring is what I'm referencing here. Not bad. Again, some things we'll talk in a second, but not bad whatsoever. And and think of this too. This is again, this is again, uh, in the chance that we have an undefeated team, possible this is yeah. this is for roughly six months of work mm-hmm. a little bit less right i mean that's not bad at all 
Not bad at all. <laughs> For well, most people, they could definitely live off. Yes, that. absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> that is uh, pretty good if you are one of the best in the league, you know, and we'll clearly we'll get our, our glimpses of that here in well, about under two weeks here. Kind of kind of sneaking up on us with that draft. <laughs> you know, 11, no, sorry, 12 days as I'm looking at this right now. Close. We'll know soon. Uh, some other contract details. Contracts begin when signed and ends when either blank happens. Here, there's three scenarios of how this can end. Uh, players not drafted. So contracts are being signed currently by some. That's not meaning you're guaranteed to be on a roster. So that's just saying you agree to the terms of the said contract they're giving you. So you have to still be drafted. They still have to pick you up during the player selections on the 22nd or 23rd. Um, that is to, of course, to be determined, but it's saying if you get drafted, you're already ready to go. You understand what you're being kind of buckled into now in season. If a player's cut contract ends instantly. So you don't have to worry about anything with like extending past a year. You're free to go as you please that that ends right there. The third scenario contract ends fully December 31st, 2022. However, there are options that are being added on to this. That's the key. You want to, Stefan, you got, what do you think about that? I, I, this is the interesting one, right? I think going into the contracts, there was a couple things that people wanted to know naturally how much people are getting paid. And two, what is the league going to do to protect that player pool mm -hmm. for a season two, considering that there's the XFL that's going to be playing again, although they're not going head to head, you can't. I very, uh, there's a very unlikely situation where you're going to see a guy play in both in the same season, right? You're not going to see a guy play February to April and then April to July in the mm -hmm. USFL. I mean, contractually, you know, they're not going to let them. And we're, we're starting to see that here. Oh yeah. Non-competes are uh, coming into order. Funny enough. And it's funny. That's not even the only, like the USFL, the XFL and funny enough, the FCF I have learned all three of those have non-competes with each other, or at least, sorry, the USFL and the FCF do. I can't confirm the XFL, and I'm not going to do that right now. Right. Um, but it's reasonable to assume, I'm going to throw a slight speculation zone in here. It is reasonable to assume that you will see a non-compete probably between the two leagues that are competing with each other. Daryl Moose Johnston has said himself, I'm looking forward to competing with the XFL. Mm -hmm. It is prime competition. They will be fighting for players, much like the CFL, actually, because funny enough, even the USFL will not let you go to the CFL. You are only allowed to jump to the NFL. Right. So they look at that as competition as well. Fair enough. It's all spring football. That player pool is looking to play in that similar time frame. Uh, and that is part of that deal as well, too. Um, other tidbits. Let's see here. Uh, they'll get extensive health insurance through 2023. So those that were asking questions about that, that is a checkbox mark off. Well, and the well. nice thing about that, and this is an interesting, right? So, if they sign the option, right, if mm -hmm. they sign the extension, so they're going to know by April 30th if the league is interested in extending them, regardless if they stay on or not, they keep that health insurance through 2023 if they sign the extension. That is nice. Right. And so if they get cut, they're going to get that health care. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I like that. You know, it's a clean move. I mean, I the security blanket, you know, health insurance is one, that's one thing, you know, people... You want to be protected for the inevitable, especially in a high risk job like the USFL, right? You know, and especially if your season ends because of a severe injury, like you tear an ACL, you know, or you break a bone or something, a freak accident on the field. It's good to have that peace of mind as you are recovering through the rest of the year because ACLs, you definitely are, you're done. You, you have to, you have to be sitting out and re rehabbing at that point. You don't want to be a Mike Berkovici, which is not even his hey, name, right? What is hey. his, is it Mike? It is. It is. It is. You you were about to say Mark, weren't you? Weren't you? I don't even know. I was trying to say the wrong one, to be honest with you, just to no, get no, it. You, uh, so did you I say the right. right one by accident? It's Mike. It's Mike. <laughs> it is Mike Berkovici. We we got obviously we've been saying him enough to where people are like, it's not Mark Berkovici, dude. <laughs> No, I find that that's hilarious. You, so you really were trying to say that wrong? I was, and I, you know, that's Real? funny, and then I got it right. You know, And I was trying to say it right before, and I got it wrong. I guess that just <laughs> welcome to my mind, I guess. Beautiful. <laughs> good moment. I love it. That, that's good. 
Well, congratulations. Yes, if you get jacked up like a Mike Bercovici, <laughs> and I seriously, I don't know how the heck we have gotten this far with getting this man's name <laughs> <laughs> on this show. But you know, yeah, you want you want to have that covered up. That is a nice part of the part that's added to this. It's good. It's good. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> a few okay, a few more tidbits with the handbook that were revealed as well. Again, th- again, uh, shout out to Mike Mitchell for getting this uh, conduct related issues. So we're talking like drug policy, uh, name and likeness type of stuff. So first, name and likeness. If a player has any existing marketing endorsement, sponsorship, or licensing agreements in place, they and their agents must disclose this for the league the time that they sign the contract. Yeah, this is probably this is probably uh, to some maybe a no brainer, you know, just to have to let them know. Um, leagues kind of, you know, we're talking players that aren't like NFL level all the time that are big time, but still it could happen. Right. You never know what the, there is. Uh, drug policy, USFL is a comprehensive drug policy, which includes both substances of abuse and performance enhancing substances. Again, that's just kind of a housekeeping item. I'm not totally shocked. Um, and then finally, every player assigned to USFL has an interval name, image, and likeness rights for merchandising, endorsements, promotions, and practice event game footage. So that piece is what I think is hinting at people. They're going to market people uh, pretty quick. Mm-hmm. I think, uh, if I'm going to take a guess out of this handbook, the first few weeks are going to be evaluating who are the stars. They will then start marketing those said stars by mid season. I think so. To get you interested. That that is exactly what I think that is that is getting you ready for is like, hey, you uh, so and so quarterback of the Gamblers, right? You're pretty damn good. All right, let's make an ad. Or hey, uh, running back for the Pittsburgh Maulers, or maybe a coach is winning. So like Jeff Fisher, of mm-hmm. course, you can get on there. This is more players, but nonetheless, like marketing, TV, it's all TV focused. T-shirts, things like that too. I mean, mm-hmm. like just looking back at the XFL. I mean, once they realized that PJ Walker was PJ Walker. Yep. They had PJ Walker t-shirts. So we're talking like week three. They had them. <laughs> they were there. They were I mean, who remembers up. the, who remembers the MVP J t-shirts? Oh, I like have those, I, it, you have one. Oh, I up. wish I had picked one up before they were gone. Yeah. I wish I had one. Uh, I know. And it is a shame that you can't find a lot. Of, you can't find that merchandise very easily anymore. It's unfortunate. Yeah. I got, I got lucky at the uh, clearance sales for this battle Hawk stuff. So I got like two of those shirts, one from like 40, from like 47, mm-hmm. you know, so I don't know. I got lucky there. And, but you know, that's exactly right. Like, that's the other part of it. I'm thinking I'm still on like TV on the brain for it, but they're going to evaluate and make sure that players that are making an impact, like the PJ walkers of the world or Jordan Ta'amu's of the world, which I mean, it's funny. Jordan Tom, who sounds like he might be uh, yeah. in this <laughs> potentially um, they're going to get him on it. They're going to get him in front of the camera and say, Hey, smile. You're a face of a league. We need to get stars. So, right. and especially if they survive past year one, uh, we might be in that conversation of who gets the uh, star treatment. How do you retain those stars? We're not even there yet, mm. but this opens that door to like, who do you keep? Right. Who's going to be here? It's items to think about. I mean, it's so crazy to me. I, I felt again, I, to out of complete fairness, I felt the same way about the XFL. I thought, a, a season two was guaranteed. I feel like a season two is very much guaranteed here with the USFL. Again, circumstances always change. We saw what right. happened with the XFL. So I'm not saying a hundred percent, but I, I mean, just hearing what the executives are saying, just because I don't think they're worth calling out its own, its own spot here. But we we saw a couple of Fox executives join outkick 360 this week. We yes. had Edward Hartman and uh, sorry, Mike, Mike Mull of, Mulv- Mulvihill. 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 Yes. Sorry, Mike Mulvihill. Sorry. I if you guys watch the show, you know I'm not very good with names, but Mulvihill, that's how you say it. And they are very positive, very positive that we're going to see this league continue on for season two and three. Even in the earnings call this week with right. uh, Lachlan Murdoch, mm-hmm. they they basically said the 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 league's essentially paid for already for at least the first two or three years from outside investors alone. Now, whether that means, you know, the NBC deals, some of the funding they're getting with Birmingham, or maybe they're further along in that private ownership conversation that we're aware of. Uh, The one thing that really stands out from both of the executives interviews this week is they both shared the same uh, sentiment that they know that fans want more information, but -hmm. they're doing it on their time because they want it to be right. 
<laughs> hey, they've been following that since the beginning. And I, we can sympathize. We stress. We want to hear it too. Right. Okay. I, I'll say it this week. I, I'm I'm finally at that point where I'm like, okay, I get it. I want to see a schedule now. All right. We we've been a few weeks. It's time. We know the first game. The Super Bowl's coming up. If supposedly that Super Bowl ad is going to hit, which hey, it hit the clash last week. I'm telling you, man, it's got that has to be happening. It feels so, right. It feels like it's going to happen. You know, <laughs> they Robert. Robert did not, of course, uh, hint at that and didn't get the clash one wrong. So, uh, reasonable to assume. Nonetheless, I would like a schedule too. I would like people that are casual fans because there's this whole divide. We talk about this in in Twitter or on our group chats. There's casual fans and there's diehard fans. Mm-hmm. Diehard fans like uh, like us or those that watch this show, um, for the most part, they're wanting every nugget. Any scrap you can find, like we're talking on here, we're itching, clawing, and grabbing for it. Casual fans, they go for the big announcements. So, like, you see the USFL drop something, and then all of a sudden, maybe, you know, we know about it weeks earlier, and then pro football talk drops it. And they're like, oh, now it's real. That's the type of people that we're worried about. Like, we get it. What about the people that might be tuning (laughs) in that don't know about this yet or aren't following along with the stories and, like, crawling Google and doing all this stuff? Well, and exactly right. Exactly right, too, because, I mean, this is 2022. People have a much smaller attention span than they did before, and there's Mm -hmm. a good chance that you could tell everybody everything right now, but then that leaves you with no announcements leading up to the season. Like that that last month before the season, man, I expect the marketing machine is going to be cranking things out left and right. And that's the time be. that you really want to hit these people, right? They, they're, they're churning it slowly. They got the picture series yeah. going on right now. Although I'm going to put, this is my last yeah. bit on this and I'm going to stop getting on people. Cause I bet, I bet people are like, okay, can we like knock this off? Where is the Todd Haley interview? I am getting, I'm serious, man. They made all seven people forgot about it. And I'm now I'm just going on like this tangent where I'm like, dude, where's this interview footage? <laughs> Did he just not make it that day? It's like, yeah, I, I don't get it. Know. I don't get it. It's uh, it's one of those mysteries that maybe we'll never know an answer to, but hopefully, hopefully there's a funny story involved. Maybe, maybe he had to go meet up with Antonio Brown and sign that contract <laughs> that day. Who knows guys? <laughs> I'm cl- I'm being sarcastic just in case anybody questions that I, you know, pitchforks <laughs> fired detract. I don't want to blockade. You know, I don't want to hear joking. You, you never know. Maybe, maybe we'll find, though. hopefully, maybe. hopefully the story is revealed. I'm just telling you, man, they released like another post on Twitter about like all eight coaches and you see Haley in the Tampa Bay bandits polo. And I'm going, Oh, either this is photoshopped or he had time for the photo, but he didn't have time for the interview. Come on, man. I'm just, he ain't it's got no time piece. for that. He's going <laughs> classic meme. That marketing's good. Sure up. You know, we're here in, you know, draft time. It sounds like it's going to really kick into gear. I think they want players to, you know, pipe up to, you know, mm. make things easier. I mean, schedule's going to come out though. It, you know, we, I get the, get the frustration as we're on this tangent, but that's the thing. You know, we get these pieces of news. You know, and we want to hear about this stuff, um, which, like I said, the contract thing's great. Um, now, I want to. I'm going to turn a little harsher. Yeah, there you go. And we'll play some out. good cop. We'll play some good cop, bad cop a little bit. And I, I'm going to start this with a question here, Stefan. Okay. So these numbers, they're they're, they're pretty good on the surface. Mm-hmm. Forty five thousand for an active roster player that's playing every week, guaranteed. That's pretty solid. Yeah, without that's winning like any on, games. Like we had, we had people breaking this stuff down. Like what was better XFL 2.0 or this? And it was like pretty much close to each other about what you were hearing, like similar numbers in that way. Mm. Now, what did you assume? And this will be similar to me. What did you assume was the housing situation based on the language we have had? So, well, I mean, prior to this, everything that we've understood was that housing was going to be included as wrong as long as food. Now, it seems like that's the case for the preseason training camp, all that, mm-hmm. but that shifts into the regular season. Yeah. Um, and now to be fair, to be fair, we did reach out to the league and their comment was, we have no comment. Essentially. <laughs> right. It was we're we're, 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 we're not going to comment on that matter. Take that for what you will that, I mean, in some people's mind right away, 
that confirms that it's true. Mm-hmm. In other people's minds, there may be more to the story. And now, I I don't I think that it's probably accurate that there's some type of payment involved. But I also think, and I don't know, but I also think there's probably more to the story as well, right? So, for instance, what what we heard initially is already kind of softened up a bit. Initially, it sounded like they're going to have to pay for the hotels. They have to. Whereas right. now they might not be, they might not have to. There's other, I don't know if there's other housing options that they're offering or if you live in the area or you want to get an Airbnb or if you want to rent a house and share it amongst players. It, it sounds like that's an option. Again, not a great option, I will admit, but an option. So it's not something right. that the league is forcing per se. Um, but I mean... Again, I feel like there's probably a lot more deals details to this. I'm sure I'm sure one of these days an actual print version of this contract will leak and all of this will be answered. But I will say I lean on the side of your fence that it seems like all of this is accurate, regardless if there's a comment or not. It's not great, but it's something, right? Sure. Sure. I I look back and I look back here after, so the whole initial piece of this is that housing will be available for $150 a night at the hotels. Now, the hotels have been part of this deal since the beginning. And early talks with the USFL, well, really Fox and Birmingham officials, they wanted to utilize 40,000 hotel nights in the city of Birmingham. Utilize is the key word. Going back into this, I was like, oh, they're going to, you know, I, I'm like you, I'm thinking they're going to pay for it, right? but much like how you've definitely taught me in the past and how I'm getting more keen to this wording is very important. Utilize. That does not mean that they will be paying for it. That's not guaranteeing it will, mm-hmm. you know, and I know that there's still some stuff in the air possibly. Um, I'm definitely leaning on the side that it's on good faith that this is happening, but that wording makes me then go, Oh, this is where the door was possibly left open here. So 150, right now the talk is $150 a night will be available as a rate for players without the incidentals. So no Wi-Fi or things like that is what's being discussed and what is supposedly leaked in this handbook as an option. And it sounded like options for other places that you're talking about are possibly available. That's great. My question would be, and this is more directed towards the city of Birmingham itself, as well as Fox, mostly Birmingham. How is getting a less guaranteed stream of revenue for your hotels the vital option here when you're making the players make this choice? Like, why not just have Fox do it Mm -hmm. outright? Like, just say, okay, we're buying these hotels. You get all your money here and the players get in, you know, I, and I, I got, I kind of have a theory here, a speculation, if you will, speculation zone item. I like it. So let's look back at at least the AAF. I, I won't say as much the XFL because their their split was at least a little more amicable and it was understanding and there was money there to cut it off to a degree. There were some bankrupt issues that still didn't fully get resolved, I'll admit. But the AAF, one thing that was a problem for them, they were the ones on the hook for the hotels and they left players stranded yeah. flat out. Right. And players <laughs> then got the bill. So I'm not saying the USFL is bound to fail. And I don't think it will at all. I really don't think it will because they're doing financial savvy. But I think this move was made to put the burden of the hotels on the players so that if say DEFCON five hits and you have to hit, you have to hit the big red button to blow it all up. Their hands are technically clean, right? Right. right. There's nothing on the hook because the contract says the players are paying for these rates, right? We have this arrangement. The players, players are doing it. So that's what I think is on this. Instead of saying, we're going to pay every night and do it that way, which I would rather have, by the way, Fox has the money. This isn't, this isn't Reggie Fowler, like fly by night. All of a sudden, you know, FTC's knocking on your door. This is Fox, right? I wish at the same time though, these are the Mm -hmm. things. And again, I'm not saying I agree with it, That's a very important distinction. Put your pitchfork, fire away. But these are the types of things that are going to help ensure we see a season two. Right. I don't like it. I don't like it. 
But now here's the thing. Now, now, now it's a different game, right? You come back for season two. Is it the same? Do you build upon what you have now? Um, because I think especially so when you start having these guys, and we're going to talk about this a little bit later, but potentially doing a little bit more travel between mm-hmm. stadiums and things like that. Um, it, it, I think it's a different game. I think you almost have to pay for stay. I mean, you, what you can't well, yeah, be in a season- situation where a guy is in Tampa Bay and can't afford a, a, a hotel, right? Well, season two, that's going to be a lot of extra questions. Cause if we're talking people that are there, that supposedly they're already looking at investors and supposedly there's people that are having preliminary talks behind the scenes on getting teams out to their markets. Yeah. That's a completely different thing. You know, I am just enough. Okay. With letting it slide. If players have options to house themselves, you know, mm-hmm. now what worries me there is if they say they get drafted and, you know, Birmingham is in terms of the housing as the, Verbo Airbnb market catches on generally if they know traffic's going to be there. I hate to say it prices jump, right? That's the thing that worries me. And then the hotels have to be the option because it's technically subsidized a little bit, you know, it's a Mm -hmm. rate that they agreed upon. So it's kind of stuck as flat. I think either way, I'm not, I wish this wasn't the case, but like, but again, my theory is, is that they're trying to be like, we're playing this safe. We're playing this to the money, the vet, the vet, vest and keeping the money where we have little little loose ends as possible if it happens to go wrong Mm -hmm. if it happens to go sideways right and that's the only thing i can justify it being otherwise i'm just saying sitting here and going why do you not pay for this fully right 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 you know that's my that's my whole mindset that's it you know that's the best that's the calmest way i can put it Mm -hmm. without being upset that like this is a player rights thing what are you doing you know ufpa get on this you know Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying (laughs) <laughs> I will say this, you know, I mean, there's always going to be some good with, uh, some bad with the good always. The, mm-hmm. This could be a lot worse. There could be a lot. I mean, l- you, you mentioned the AF earlier. I mean, they were carting those guys across state lines because they couldn't, they had to oh, skirt God. around the health insurance or the, the insurance oh, yeah. laws in Florida. I was going to Georgia right? and all that. Yeah. So, I mean, it, this isn't that I, I, again, I don't like it. I will deal with it. As we move into season two, hopefully season three and beyond, I think the expectations maybe get a little higher to say, well, come on now, come on now, because we're doing things that maybe other leagues haven't, right? Especially by that, considering expansion or whatever might happen. So that's my take on it. It ain't the greatest news. It ain't the worst news, right? It is Mm -hmm. by far the worst news. At least I'm not worrying about having a guy that owns a hockey team potentially coming in and saving the league after week two, right? I don't have to worry fair, about fair. that. Like none of the executives are getting carted off for tax fraud. Shouldn't be a Tom Dunnan scenario in this right. at all, because like I said, it would, from, I mean, Fox is for crying out loud reporting, like better than ad, like they're getting gains in ad revenue right now. Like they're making money. Mm. They, you know, there's, this is a company that has the dough, right? you know? So finances again, not a problem. I think also this slides a little for me this year. And I'm saying slightly mm-hmm. because of the fact that, well, they don't have competition in terms of, you know, the XFL, which is going to be very prevalent next year. Mm-hmm. Um, the CFL doesn't do paid housing. So in terms of outdoor markets and rivals, it's technically on par. Again, I just wish both of them did pay for housing, but I digress. Um, and the only other thing you can compare this to is indoor and arena leagues, which do pay for apartment housing. You know, that is the case. Mm-hmm. Uh, funny. You talk with Jim Renier and who's a massive sharks fan. He knows they pay for a hotel in downtown Jacksonville, like a whole level for the team to stay at. So this does happen in those leagues. Difference is though, that's a standard in arena outdoor. It's not really, you know, mm-hmm. I guess that's the only way I can put it. It's just, that it's in a hub. So you think it be that way. That's the last bit I got on this. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this year it's going to, you just have to deal with it as a fan. That's like an element, you know, has been in the back of your head, but next year they gotta, it's going to be something they probably rethink if markets get moved to, you have competition that will be rivaling you probably on certain elements of what your contracts look like with or without non-compete clauses. Right. So you have to consider these elements this year. They can, because they're the sole guys right now. Mm-hmm. That's it. You know, they're setting a standard. They're the base. They're the bar right now. 
right. in terms of what's active, not the defunct past, what's active at the moment. And I mean, and I think it is important to add, I don't think this is going to dissuade a lot of people from playing in the USFL. Clearly, it's going to stop some. We've seen a couple. Yes. I'm not going to mention it, but uh, I think there's still a lot of guys that, I mean, it's their dream to either get back on the football field or get on it, you know, at least for the first time in a professional setting to kind of prove themselves. Um, again, I don't necessarily think that it should be this case, but I don't, I don't worry there from a, a pool standpoint either. Right. I don't think we're going to, mm -hmm. we're going to see a drastic dip because of this, but it gives us something to look forward to for the next year and the years beyond to see how they adjust, how they build, how they grow. They, we've heard this from the executives already and they kind of know where they're at. They're going into the season one, very bare bones, very basic. I mean, we're seeing again, I, it's not the spring league because we're seeing, so much more of a marketing machine behind it than, yes. than we could even imagine for the spring league. Uh, yes, it's a central hub, but I mean, we got some big name coaches. We got, I mean, quality names and logos, cities are associated, things like that. That And we're starting to see them, at least Brian Woods, at least do some of these local interviews, um, which we're going to talk right. about later. So they're, they're at least bringing that interest into the local market. So they not, might not be playing there, but they're, they're at least testing the waters, right? And like I said, we're going to talk about that a little bit later on. Before we get into that, though, I, mm -hmm. I, actually, this, I think we exhausted that subject, right? There's nothing else on, on the contracts, or not? Not that I'm, a, not that I can think off the top of my head. Um, say so yeah, pretty, it's pretty, pretty much the standard all around for what it is. Like I said, I, I even added bits. Like I said, we didn't put down the note, but yes, there is a non-compete with the CFL and XFL. Mm -hmm. They only want you to jump to the NFL. And honestly, competition next year, that's what do you expect? Like, I, I, again, that should be an understanding thing. I know some people were upset, but I'm like, well, they have competition. You don't want people snagging players, sure. you know, if they, and if they like the league, they're going to stay anyway. Mm -hmm. So what can I tell you? Here's, actually, this is what I want to know. Anybody watching this video, let us know down in the comments. What do you think about just all everything that we talked about? Because I, I bet you we're going to see a range of opinions and I beat those are the that's best true. opinions are the ones that are all over the place all over the mm -hmm. place. So let us know or jump in the discord links down in the description below as well. But let's, I think we switched topics, something a little bit more fun. Well, yeah. Oh, you said, you said promotion. Yeah. So we, we love the new prom. We've loved a lot of the, at least the two, one of the new promos already was the restaurant. That was the first 30 second promo. Really. I thought both of us thought it was really solid. The community thought it was really solid and folks that watched it, that were, you know, the casual fan base thought it was pretty clever, you know, Disguised as a comedy, as a comedy kind of commercial that led into a USFL. Then we got another one that snuck up on us that was hinted. It was hinted mm -hmm. that we were going to get something during the clash, and we didn't know when. But sure enough, leading into the race, we got a new USFL promo. And uh, actually, let's uh, let's play that right here, shall we? Uh, take take a look. Unbelievable. USFL coming this April. So a few things to take away. Um, I think the big one stands out. Well, uh, we had the jet, we had the gamblers in the first one. Mm -hmm. Now we got the generals, at least uh preliminary uniform reveal. <laughs> it it feels thinking. like it. it feels like this is how they're teasing it. Right. Again, if it wasn't for the gamblers account last week with the first promo, putting the eyeballs, uniforms, tweeting that out, I'd say, Oh, maybe not. It feels like they're teasing. Again, clearly they're not going to be game day jerseys. These are just mock-ups for the commercial. But I very much think that the design is going to be very much the same. Now, I will say I did love the fact of having the jacket out there, too. Oh, uh, yeah. That was an interesting, like, I don't, you know, I don't think we ever, I don't know if we ever saw one of those in the XFL, to be honest with you. I can't, can't say. And I honestly, I don't think you're going to see anything like that. Maybe in the rain. I mean, Maybe. it's in Birmingham, so like, it's not doesn't always get cold. It got cold this year. There's snow in Alabama, right? But I don't know if you'll get that in April. For sure. Nonetheless, you know, kind of cool to see that. You know, but the standard in the NFL. 
I mean, this so. this was a fun promo, though. Again, similar to the restaurant, we had like that the daydream situation going on this time, rather than in a restaurant on a work meeting. Something that we all hate sitting in traffic, yeah. construction traffic. So beyond the uniforms, we saw a couple things going on. I think we saw one of the construction workers turn into a referee, which you know I was digging, you know. <laughs> and then additionally, I think we saw one of the signs, uh, the traffic delay signs. It said defense, defense, or something like that. Either way, I really love the artistic style of these. I don't know what, like, filter they use on the lens, but they have, like, they, they all feel like a USFL promo, right? Even the 10-second ones all, all the way up to this, they have... Same kind of uh, rhythm, look, feel, everything. And then looking at the two 30-second promos, you can definitely tell there was a good team behind these. And again, I, I'm just hoping. Even, you know what, I'll be happy if we get one of these two during the Super Bowl. But just seeing how seemingly on board N uh, NBC is with the USFL, I will be amazed if we don't see something. I really hope it's a new one. I really hope it's something I, promoting the simulcast. But, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. We, we beat that horse dead a million times now, but I bring I, it up I anyway. Know. I think everyone's bringing it up anymore because they want to they know what's next, what's the next uh, bit that they show off. And I, I thought this was a – I thought this one was clever because, like, you're talking – they're starting to develop a brand, which is basically the, man, I wish I could do – I wish I could watch a game right now or I could be anywhere else, you know, doing something. Mm -hmm. And so that's exactly what they're trying to propose here is like, Hey, football's a great getaway, right? <laughs> you want, need some more, like, again, the tagline need more football. That's what they've been using this entire time. You know, it's like how, uh, it's also become the USFL's tagline. I think kind of like how for the love of football was with the XFL. Mm -hmm. I think that's what's going to be their tagline throughout the promotional marketing. You're going to keep seeing that need more football. Yeah. USFL starts April. <laughs> like that's what they've been doing at the tags at the end. Yeah. When they tested yeah, I, it. Cause there was that no more, no more football, which uh, it just, yeah, it, I get it. I get it. I understand it, but yes. yes, that one's too much. I think for the, if you have two seconds to catch someone's attention and all they see is no more football, right? That's the potential there. Right. The tad word vomity. Right. If you're not having someone speak it out, but you know? the need more football perfecto. Sign it up. Mm -hmm. I love it because you know what I need, Zach? I need more football every day. Sign me up. There's I kind of, I'm kind of with you. I, I get, I get the same itch after the Super Bowl. That's why I love this stuff so damn much. You maybe even more so than me, you know? Well, I'll tell you, you know, it, it. it's funny. It's just real quick. Cause we we're talking about the Super Bowl. It was funny to see, cause there was a lot of people that were expecting, maybe we'll see an XFL announcement during the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And I mean, at, I know, I, I, I doubted that was going to happen, if anything, just because the NBC's affiliation with the USFL. And that's not to say that the NBA, uh, NBA, NBC won't be affiliated with the XFL next year, but they're not right now, right? Uh, right. But then it turned out to be, what is it? It's a, it's a energy drink commercial? Yeah, the uh, ZOA. It's uh, like an exercise. I've tried it. It's okay. Um, but yeah, like... I mean, that's, that's an XFL community thing. Rock says something. We all assume something might be happening. I know? have a prediction. And who knows? You know, who, who knows? Huh? You have a prediction? I have a prediction. I, I should have mentioned this earlier because now it's, and now it's an easy prediction. Now it's an easy prediction, okay. but I've always thought that it's going to happen the week of the 18th, whatever the news that they're going to drop. And I say that okay. for this one reason is it's a year from when the league kicks off again. That's uh, not bad. Right. Now, the actually. unfortunate is the 18th is on a Friday, but I could see them doing like a Thursday drop and maybe doing some social activity on the Friday because they, hey, we dropped an announcement, do some social activity. By the way, did you miss our announcement? And we're kicking off a year from now. So the ref says the week of the 18th. So after the yeah. Super Bowl, that's my take uh, on it. Yeah. You, you know, that's coming. Yeah. That, that machine's getting ready to gear up. They've been hinting at it for roughly a month and a half now. Yeah. So that, that's going to be talked about too, you know, it's just that that's funny how that's been in the same discussion as like our USFL one, you know, and again, I reference how we're getting, you know, media marketing execs that are saying, Hey, you might want to watch the clash. Also the Super Bowl, you know, NBC's pretty excited. They've got some stuff planned. They're hosting it. I'm just like the pieces seem to fall in line. That's the last bit I got on that because we'll get the Super Bowl this weekend. And then we'll talk about possibly seeing that specific promo. You never know. Oh, I, I think it'll, 
yeah, I'm I'm excited for the Super Bowl twofold. I mean, it's going to be a good game too. I think so. Can't go wrong with that either. One thing, so I have to ask you. So we made our predictions last week on the Super Bowl. Yep. We both picked the Rams. Mm-hmm. So I have to ask you if you want to change your pick because this one has me uh, teetering. Real quick, <laughs> the Simpsons. Anytime oh, you get the don't. Simpsons involved, did you see the Simpsons clip? I did. I did. The Simpsons so, predicted that the Bengals are going to beat the Rams years ago. And I mean that if there's anything that's, I, I don't know, but you know what? I'm sticking with my boy, Matty Stafford. We're going to defeat the Simpsons. Hopefully. <laughs> but that was the one <laughs> thing when I saw that, I'm like, Ooh, the Simpsons said it. Uh Oh <laughs> my God. I'll, I'll say it once. I'll say it again. I, I make a pick. I got to stick with it. Um, yeah, that's my official one. I'll stick with the Rams, you know, ride or die, whatever happens, whatever happens, it happens. I also got a best friend of mine. That's a Rams fan. So like, I'll just go with that too. Good mojo for him. Uh, everyone know, in St. Louis hates us right now. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't. Hey, don't feel bad guys. I'm a lions fan. At least you got a super bowl. You know what everyone, I mean? I'm only half step above. I'm a bears fan. <laughs> so <laughs> not day. too much. Not too much. One day. <laughs> so let's, I, I right. think moving on. Speaking Look, of Lions in Detroit. Yeah, I was going to say local media tours. So Brian Woods has been getting uh, busy <laughs> as of late. He's been he's been talking to two of the markets in, le- in terms of local media. Mm. Um, for example, the Detroit News, uh, Tony Paul had a good conversation with him, a write-up with Brian on details about the Michigan Panthers as well as what the league is planning to do. And we had a few nuggets drop. Brian has been uh, giving those pieces away. It's funny, local news and podcasts, they've been great at giving these little details. Guys keep on working those angles and seeing what else falls from the tree because you know that's kind of how it's been working out right now. So Brian, in this interview with, with, with uh, Mr. Paul here, dropped a few things that kind of ca- caught a lot of our eyes. So the goal is all teams, if they can, this is the best case scenario, all teams are respect in respective markets will be moved by 2023. That is the best case scenario. And there's talks. Mm-hmm. There actually are preliminary talks in Detroit right now on where the Panthers might play. So that has already started. So add that into your list of teams that supposedly have had conversations, including the generals. And, uh, I believe we even had one as well for, uh, I think Tampa Bay had talked about it at one point. I mean, Possibly. Birmingham already is going to do it yeah. uh, as well. And then, you know, I mean, teams are getting talks. That's what we're learning. Which teams are getting talks, which I will say it is quite a surprise whether it happens or not. It is interesting that they are going at it with the approach that they want all of their teams and all the markets by next year, because I, it's always been ominously worded. Again, we're basing it off proposals that they had with the city, but I mean, up until now with their deal with Birmingham, we've always heard that the Birmingham could host as many as four next year, which has always led me to believe yeah. that, okay, it seems like what they might be trying to do is one central hub for the first year, two hubs for the second year, where we maybe we get a northern hub and a southern hub where Birmingham sticks, and then we have a northern TSL. hub, and then we have the third year everyone moves to their markets. Mm-hmm. Now we're seeing a, a, what I would say a very aggressive change in timeline considering that we haven't even hit the field and, and, and it's kind of shifting that way. Now, again, he did mention it's still fluid. Nothing's finalized. This isn't guaranteed to happen, but very much like the team ownership thing where the league is seemingly actively working in the background on things that a lot of us aren't aware of. This is the case as well. They're, they're a minimum testing the waters, reaching out to different, at least venues in this case, to see what kind of deal might be made. Now, they wouldn't specify which. So they said it was in the metro Detroit area. Right. Now, to me, again, being a Michigander, I don't know. I don't know if people would disagree with me on this. But to me, that takes Lansing out of the mix, right? I I can't see them playing in Lansing or uh, Kalamazoo, right? So Mm -hmm. Michigan State, uh, the big house, I, I think they're out of the mix. If you say metro Detroit, I think of... Detroit, and then you have the, the the immediate surrounding cities around it. I could see um, I could see maybe that being misconstrued as a non Michigander. So don't hold me to that. Uh, at the same time, 
It's very similar how I wouldn't want them. I, I didn't like the Guardians in uh, MetLife. I really sure. don't want to see them in Ford Field. They need really? to be in a dome, but I don't want to see them in Ford Field. And hmm. honestly, that might be the only choice in. And then, now, this is kind of early because I, I I don't see the, the line. This is, a, I know this is also part of why people think maybe Michigan's good here. So first off, Jeff Fisher's helped them blow up to be like the face of the league right now. It's right. They are far and away now. You talk USFL to anyone outside of like our circles. It's arguably it's arguably quite common to say that Jeff Fisher, you know, is in this. And so I think with that and like the lions, I don't see being a threat in the NFL anytime soon or right now, the way they are ever, uh, sorry to say, <laughs> you know, that's where I'm like a winner. They just find a place to play. Oh, for sure. Know? And it's, and if it's in Detroit and people go screw this, the, the tigers also are still terrible. I'll go and watch a football game across the street. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. And I'll tell you this, if they keep it affordable, right? The money's true. the name of the game, man. And I'll tell you, if they, if it follows the same type of pricing structure that we're seeing in Birmingham, $15 up to three kids under 15 for free or $10. Sorry. Did yeah, I say right $10? Now, $10. Whatever. $10 th- up to three kids under 15 for free. I mean, that alone is probably going to get you a couple thousand people in Detroit. And I mean, it's it's just the fact. Even out here, I mean, anywhere really. I mean, look at the 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 flipping Houston, uh, the Harlem Globetrotters, right? <laughs> I mean, the Harlem Globetrotters brings in a, a, an amazing amount of people. I don't know if you, I've been to a Harlem Globetrotters thing as an adult, and I was amazed at how many people were there. And it's because it's affordable and it's fun. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you this: the USFL is more affordable than the Harlem Globetrotters. Right. So the time being, for the time being, we don't even like, I I only specify that because like Jesus, the whole stadium expense thing's kind of getting pushed aside this year. But you know that if this goes down, like that's where Ford field kind of gets a knock is like, you might be paying more. Yes. You know, but maybe not though, because the lions, I'm just saying, yeah, the lions, maybe the, the city goes, Hey, you know what? You just you you you're you're looking good, especially if they play well first year. I mean, the city. I mean, imagine folks that are watching will be interested. And I'll actually touch on a point from uh, Kirby Wilson when we touch that. A few more things of Brian Woods. Um, team merch. We're talking official stuff now. I'm wearing. I, I post this today. I am wearing the drop site merch, which this isn't bad. I, I this shirt is not bad. It's actually really comfy. I'm just going to say that I got a Panther shirt. I'm a, if you haven't listened to the show enough, I'm a Michigan Panthers fan. Um, however, it's not official. It's, it's not like branded there, We don't know what the branding is. Mr. Woods here says that we got new stuff coming in a few weeks. And I know that the joke is in a few weeks now, right? In, in the coming weeks, things are going to come out, but, but no, like uh, it's looking like we're going to get an official product branding soon. I'm excited. And then, yeah, I, I am too. Cause I'm going to, I'm going to buy another shirt and compare you know, see what, what the quality is here. Well, that's what'll be interesting. Is it going to be still through like Printful or whatever they're using now, or is it going to be like truly authentic merchandise? Now, when I hear new team merch coming and it wasn't even just Brian Woods, we saw uh, from Edward Hartman, he brought it yeah, up in his I- interview with Outkick 360, new merch. So they, they're kind of pushing. Yep. We know new stuff's coming. What it is. We don't know. I, again, here's a couple things. If you guys are listening Throw us some, maybe even just replica footballs, like the ones that we saw in Birmingham at the big event in uh, Protective. Give us a few different type of shirt styles. Give us hats, different styles yes. too. Give us dad caps, because I don't know about you, Zach. I can't get with the trucker or what, whatever that oh, flat bill. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you got one back there. Yeah, I don't, but <laughs> I've never worn it. It's their perfect quality. I can, I love mm-hmm. I have a big head, but it ain't that big. That's all I'll say. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. I cannot tell you how many people I have seen that are like, where are the hats, man? Mm-hmm. Where, where are these team hats? I'm like, I'm with you. <laughs> but I didn't, I know there's hat culture as well. Like there's shoe culture. There's, there's hat culture like that. I'm just, I'm not a hat guy. So like, to me, I'm like, I'm seeing this. I'm going, I mean, they'll get hats. But like some people are like, dude, where's my snap back? <laughs> I'm like, Hey. It's coming. That's I guess they're going to get there. That's they're going to get that. Actually, dude, you know? I just bought, I bought a hat rack, which is, it's going to be oh. up here one of these weeks because you don't even know. So I have a, I have a, I have a problem, Zach, uh, 
T-shirts and hats. My wife hates me. I, you know, you, you know when you see like good, somebody's good closet <laughs> is like taken over and it's usually the wife. It's me. Okay. I have like three rows, rows, bro, rows. of shirts. And that's half of them. I have boxes of shirts. I don't. I don't oh, know. I. Oh, I'm a goodwill fiend, and I collect you, shirts from like every event I go to. Well, let me flip that too. Have you heard of donating to the goodwill? <laughs> I like them too much, dude. I was wearing a shirt the other day that no joke I had in high school. I graduated in 2002. Just let that sink oh, in. Oh my. Okay. And I had okay. it from like. It, maybe my sophomore year of high school we're talking over 20 years old and my favorite my wife hates because i have a i naturally when you have shirts that old some of them naturally have holes in them i lovingly oh, refer oh. to them as character oh, now, I, oh, I see what's going on here. these holes come in here i don't do it but if it's down by the the waist i mean sign me up i think this shirt has a bleach stain on it and that is my favorite if I get a bleach stain on something, it's like ascended to one of my favorite pieces of clothing. And I, I, I'm not a slob. I think it's a fashion statement. I'm like a fashionable slob, like fashionably late. Like, okay. I, I know there's a stain and you I just, actively chose to still wear it. I'm not the, like the character. Yeah. I love it. It's so anyway, we're yeah, you sound like uh the you sound like the variant of like a person that's like you know Chuck's got to have the dirt on him otherwise they're not like like clean Chucks don't look good. Right. And I'm, I'm the same guy where I'm like kind I'm like I like a little dirt but I don't like like everything's on there. Right. I, I get what you're doing. <laughs> so just, hey, you know what? You do you. I'm gonna go buy. <laughs> Eventually though, you'll get your cap, your gambler's cap. I'm excited. You're gonna be getting. Yeah. I, I, soon enough, it's coming. Hopefully. Hopefully. I mean, you think you would think. There's enough people have said about hats. I mean, we're, I would, well, not guarantee. Got to stay. I think we'll yeah, get them yeah. before the end of the season or before, sorry, before the uh, beginning of the season, for sure. For sure. Whether you, it's going to be imagine, in this first drop, I don't know. But I imagine if they don't release anything during this, they're just like, ah, drop ship items, which funny enough, uh, something I noticed when I bought the shirt, you know, cause I bought through PayPal and they still list it. And you know, this was an idea from the Brian Woods, like tune up phase. Mm -hmm. It says Spring League LLC oh, when right. you buy the shirt from the drop site. So this is technically a Spring League shirt. <laughs> to the US rare. Itself. I'll say this, that's, though. That's safe. I'll say this, though. Like three years from now, like that could be a collector's item, right? If the you league's know, still around and like, you know, once you get those weird collector scenes in there of like, well, that shirt was only made for like three months before they even made official <sighs> merchandise. You know, like, I mean, that hat, that's going to be my million dollar ticket to retirement right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Final tidbits from Brian Woods as we get back on track uh, to close out the show. Um, let's see here. Final thing that we got player pool is now over 3000 players. So it's getting bigger. However, there will be a cut down to 400 to 450 to 500 players at the draft. My thing is now. There sounds like that there will possibly be cut downs, which I was kind of thinking they might do cut downs anyway with training camp. So, right. you know, I mean, sure, you can draft squarely the rosters, but if coaches are coaches, you never know. Competition health is healthy to breed out the best in a player and to, you know, get what you want out of them, proving they're ready to play. So you're going to see rosters, it looks like possibly the way Brian's mentioning it that they're going to expand it, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to be bigger. At least, at least in the lead up to the season, right? Because at like least you in said, the lead up. where the training camp, yeah, I think it, it at least gives them some wiggle room to cut some guys, trade some guys. Um, I mean, it's going to be super interesting to see how these coaches build their teams too, right? Because there's no set, like, I mean, there's a set rules. You need a quarterback, clearly. I mean, you, you would think they were going to get a quarterback, but I mean, we might see run heavy teams, pass heavy teams, defense heavy teams, right? Yeah. And it'll be interesting to see how they like one how the how the draft is going to be structured. We've heard rumors, and I and I'm pretty certain it'll probably be similar to the XFL where it's in phases. But boy, if it isn't, think of all the interesting little plays we could see where 
Somebody really wants to stack a defense heavy team. Okay, I got some O line guys. I got, you know, I get my quarterback, I get my running back, wide receiver, and mm -hmm. just start stacking heavy on defense and start relying on the secondary guys that get left over for your remaining pieces. You could well, build yeah. like the team that nobody can score against. Right. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, these coaches act as GMs as well in a way. So they will have the power to execute trades uh, as well. They Each team will have a director of player personnel too, but the coaches technically will have the final say in a lot of these things. Stuff can happen. Mm -hmm. you know. So you can also stock up, say, a training camp by a, a player is what you like to see. Maybe you missed out. You know, Remember in the XFL, Luis Perez was on the Wildcats before he ended up on the, on the Guardians. Right. So anything can happen before the season starts with that three-week period. And I, again, I'm not surprised, like we're going to get to 45 a team, but it's a coaching element to see what you get in the early season. What else might come out like in a late round, or maybe he outplays the earlier rounder guy and you just like the spunk from him a bit more. So right. that opens that possibility. Think shout out again to Tony Paul from Detroit news. There, getting that interview, getting some nuggets, really appreciated the, the re the write up on that. Good to hear from you. Another one that we got here from tribe live. Uh, we had a conversation from Kirby Wilson out there. Yeah. Another Pittsburgh outlet. We had a, uh, some news outlets talking from also to Brian Woods, funny enough about the Maulers this week, mm -hmm. but also Wilson was, on, was on for a conversation as well with the folks over at tribe live. We got a little bit of uh, nuggets for him. So we've heard of Bart Andrus's staff for some degree. We had a, him release about four people that he's getting in the process of signing or is already done at this point. Um, Kirby has already hinted that he has one that's already on. Uh, Jaron Horton, mm -hmm. who is the current, at least was, at least coming into the season was the Connecticut defensive coordinator. He's related to, uh, Ray Horton, who has been a player coach and Super Bowl champion in both categories in his career. Uh, won Super Bowl in 1992 with the Dallas Cowboys and won two Super Bowls with his tenure as a secondary coach for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, Jaron also is with the AAF. He was with the legends from what I have understood. And so he has that background with him going into, uh, kind of learning. Sounds like he's earlier into his coaching in his coaching pedigree. Um, here he is, you know, kind of another step in his career journey. So this is interesting too, because I had the same feeling about the XFL and even the spring league. So a lot of people, when we look at the spring leagues, they look at the players. Oh, the, this is the time for the players to get a shot to prove themselves. It is for coaches as well, right? Especially yes. when you start looking at these secondary assistants, things of that level, right? This is this is Jaron's shot, right? And I mean, he, I, I mean, if you look at his career path, he's moved up pretty fast, right? It wasn't too long yes. ago he was with the Legends, and then with UConn, and now moving into the USFL. I mean, he's having a nice progression here, and kind of what you mentioned, follow following in his father's footsteps, right? His father was a player. Yes. Moved into coaching. He was a player. Now he's moving into coaching. And I think the, these leagues are a great way for these guys to get some some experience on the field. I mean, we've even seen it with broadcasters, too, like Greg Olson. So, you know, it, the spring leagues provide much more opportunity than just the players. And this proves it right here. And, I mean, if the Maulers come out and we were talking about strong defense and they have a heck of a defense out there, this dude's made a name for himself just from one small career change. Yeah. Uh, Restressing it is a Trib Live, not Tribe Live. It's based on Tribune Review uh, to clarify that on the source. And that's from Tim Benz over there. But yes, uh, Jaron does. Th this is a step. Mm. And this is this is something like we talked about. And I know Pep Hamilton was already kind of established before he went to the XFL. But people are obsessed that that watched Pep Hamilton coach the defenders, mm -hmm. they are obsessed with this guy getting a head coaching job or coming back to the league or getting a next step in his career path. I, I mean, these are the guys we live for seeing these right. teams. So, you know, Kirby Wilson's his own story in that regard, because he's never been a head coach right. in his 36 year tenure in the NFL. He's gotten his chance. And actually with this conversation he had with Tim Benz and also via the segment he had for the, uh, breakfast with Ben's podcast, Similar deal. He's just very appreciative. Sounds like a humble guy that is ready to take his advan his chances with this opportunity. And he gets to play. I mean, funny enough, he gets to be in the league alongside a former staff member and Todd Haley. Right. 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 <laughs> so kind of ironic how that worked out as well. He actually got talked, asked about that in that interview segment on his relationship. He's like, he actually stated, uh, it, I'm not, not, not direct quote, but in a way he goes, 
We might have had disagreements in the facility, but on field, it was all football. He's a good coach. He's a good guy to f- be around with in terms of football knowledge. So well, that's you know, good. respect for words. I like, I, I like that. You know, very humble. Like I said, very humble and excited guy. I'm really, I think Pittsburgh's going to be happy to see him. And you know what? He had a great quote. And this is a talk about the league we have here is how do you get the local market to buy into your team? And actually, Tim Benz asked this question to him on the podcast. He said, how are you going to get Pittsburgh natives to buy into a team that's playing in Birmingham? And he said it best. He apparently is an L.A. Lakers fan. And he said, you know what? I don't live in L.A. I don't I don't go to games that are in L.A. But you know what? I still root for him. Mm-hmm. Long distance connection can still work. He that's his That's his pitch. It's a long distance connection. But we are working to get back there. You support us. We'll be ready for you when we come. That, that's exactly what he's putting out right now. And I think that's the best way you can approach it if you're not in Birmingham is you just have to sell it that way. For sure. For sure. And again, it is nice to see that they're starting to talk at least to the local outlets because, again, it builds that awareness to those. Yeah, you might not be able to go see the team play that year in mm-hmm. person, but you can watch them on TV and hopefully build that antis- anticipation, hopefully year two. Now, one one other thing to mention too. So, uh, Kirby Wilson mentioned. So he's going to run the offense for the team as well. So yes. now we see him coming in first time as head coach, and still running the offense for the team. Which, I mean, this dude, again, there's a whole lot of opportunity here for all the, at least the two coaches that we know on the team. If they're good, strong defense and strong offense, these dudes are set. They just made names for themselves. I mean, not that we don't know them already, but again, to maybe that more casual audience. Yeah. I, I think that, uh, he's, it's kind of testing the waters for him. You know, he, he talked in, in that show that, you know, it's a lot of stuff's going to be new. You know, he, his thing is get a lot of it down year one, year two. We have a really, you know, hopes is a good football team year one, but he's like by year two, we'll definitely have a team that the city of Pittsburgh will be proud of. And that if we bring them back to the city for the spring, that they will come and rally behind. I like that a lot. And, you know, offensively, that is his wheelhouse. Mm-hmm. He gets to experiment a little bit more than he maybe has before. He's usually been in just like an assistant piece. He hasn't really been a coordinator. So kind of, he gets like, it's a step up in a lot of regards for him. Yeah. You know, he's like, like they said, when he was brought in, a respected assistant in the league, he just hasn't gotten that bigger shot. Mm-hmm. This is, this is your next one as close as you're going to get for that on that level. And it's technically still professional football. That's the thing. USFL is, it is in that professional category. It's minor league in terms of NFL, mm-hmm. but it is considered professional. It's the next step past college. Yeah, so he absolutely. Is a football coach in that regard. Right. In that case. One final note from this interview that I found fascinating still, and some people go, well, dang, man, it's crunch time. How do they not know this? <laughs> they haven't fully gotten instructions on how the player selection will work. Um, they are still waiting on a few things, which I'm kind of surprised uh, this was recorded and edited out on February 9th. Mm-hmm. We're recording on the 10th. So 13 days from then, I'm like, oh, that's shocking a little bit. You know, I don't, maybe, I mean, eventually you think they have this in order. Again, they're keeping to the vest and they're having an order. This is leaked out from Kirby. But yeah, I was kind of surprised to hear that. I think, I would think that those instructions were already handed out at this point. Yeah, that's, it is a little interesting, um, but I mean, I'm not surprised at it at the same time just by, again, the the flow that we've seen from the league. Uh, but I, I mean, realistically, I think all of the coaches there are professionals. Uh, mm-hmm. I think they're going to, I think they're going to be able to wing it. I mean, realistically, there's probably one or two choices. It's either going to be a snake draft or it's uh, like a true snake draft or it's going to be a phased snake draft. I mean, probably is my guess, probably. right? Probably. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've all, this has been rumored behind the scenes too. It's been, we've heard rumblings that that's how it's going to play out. And there's even been speculation, a speculative piece or two that's been out this week, even, uh, that's talked about it in a similar format. So, you know, there are things, it's just that, I don't know. I, for some reason that stood out to me. Cause I'm like, well, wait a minute. I'm, I'm shocked that, you know, if we're getting rumblings on it, how is a coach not fully, I don't right. know that, that that's, that's like one thing I just kind of raised my eyebrows a second. I'm like, okay, it's probably going to happen. But like, all right. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, still, I, 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 fi- I finish on that point. Kirby, again, he sounds excited. I, I, I think he'll be one of my favorite coaches that people don't fully know about, but he just, cause he's like, I'm dying to have this opportunity. I can't believe I'm getting this chance. Like, I love the humbleness this guy brings. Mm-hmm. It is, it, it just fills me up with like a bunch of joy to, to hear him talk about his opportunity. 
it's I mean all around the league it, now that we're seeing more of these well I mean now that we know the coaches we're hearing yeah. and seeing more of the coaches just via social media right we we saw a couple different campaigns this week like you mentioned earlier no Todd Haley shirt reveal but we saw ones from the rest of the coaches we saw them drawing the logos so we're we're, we're starting to see things get into gear um, I expect that the league has probably started to hire some more of those components that are really going to make that wheel greased up and work the way it should. And mm -hmm. realistically, the timing's right. All right. From here on yeah. out, we're, we're just about two months, a little bit over two months from kickoff. I think that's when we're going to start. I mean, hopefully we'll get the Super Bowl ad or a Super Bowl mention at minimum. But in that last month, month and a half leading into the season, I think we're going to see some 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 interesting plays, right? Because there is no football, but I, I think they're going to be advertising the league. Um, yeah. So, I mean, Colin Coward, we heard, uh, the Herd at least, our favorite show. He's going to be kind of the unofficial spokesman for the league. He's going to be covering the league a lot. So, clearly, we're going to be seeing a lot of news there, keeping people updated, getting probably new promos or runnings of the old promos. But I look beyond that, like um, – you know, what are some of the big sporting events? Uh, I mean, the ones on Fox, I don't know off the top of my head because I, they don't run March Madness. That's all CBS and TBS, I believe. Uh, so there's no opportunity yeah. there. Uh, but I don't know. They might have a take. I think CBS is the Masters, too. They, yes, they generally hold a portion of the Masters. Oh, do they? I, okay. believe the Ma I believe the Masters is, if I remember this correct, Masters, I'm pretty sure, is split up between like ESPN gets part of it and then CBS gets part of it. I just don't remember which half. Right, like right, one right. gets the beginning half, the second gets the back half. But yeah, they, they host part of it. For sure. They host part of it. Needless to say, we could tell they're not scared of running a USFL promo during NASCAR. And no, they're not. Man, think if we got a Daytona ad. Oh, I, at this point, if they played in the Clash. Right. I mean, I don't know if they'll be new, but. I mean, post Super Bowl, you would think they're going to churn. They're going to churn up a little bit. Yeah. I mean, Daytona 500. It's one of the. It's another one of the most watched <laughs> items on the TV schedules every year. Mm. You know, it's not Super Bowl level, but it still gets a lot of eyeballs. Right. right Even right. more than the Clash does, by the way. Oh. So, if you think 4.28 million on Fox was one thing, you're going to get more if you run them a on lot that. more. It's going to happen. Oh yeah. Uh, going to wrap things up though, guys, thanks for tuning in. Shout out by the way, as I, uh, this was going to be in the mailbag, but we answered your question, Dave Smith. Thanks for tuning in. And Dave, thanks for being a fan of the show. Uh, folks, if you haven't gotten a chance yet to check out a few of his Facebook groups that I'm also in as well, me and Stefan interact with recommend you do, uh, hit them up to join either USFL Birmingham stallions fans, 2022 or newly launched USFL new Orleans breakers fans, 2022. So, uh, he's helping to, uh, build some communities recommend you hit him up on Twitter or Facebook. He's a good dude, loves the league and loves chatting it up with us. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate you talk with me and Stefan every week. We, we love getting fan interactions like yourself on there. Um, Finally, though, folks, again, if you if you watch the whole thing through here at this point, if you listened in, recommend you subscribe on your favorite podcast platform or subscribe on our YouTube page. Hit the bell. It builds morale. I'm just saying. You're going to feel good about it. You'll never miss a video from us. And check us out on social. And, you know, USFL Podcast, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We'll get that TikTok. We got the stuff. One of these we days. Accounts. We'll get the stuff up for you. And be sure to check out spring stock, any of the info on, of course, pro football newsroom site. We'll have the link in the description for that too. If you're watching on YouTube folks, thanks a lot. Appreciate your time. Stefan, any last words for yourself? My good man. I don't think so. Uh, I get sign you guys up for, for, I mean, supporting us as much as you have. We're almost at 700 followers on Twitter. We're all, yes. I mean, we're at 385 here, at least at the time of recording over here on YouTube. We're getting massive, I mean, way more listens than I ever thought we would on the audio version of the podcast. I mean, <laughs> just a little bit over a month. We're on, this is episode six right now. I, by the time this comes out tomorrow, I'm pretty confident, and maybe I'll, I'll smack myself for saying this, but we're less than 100 views away from hitting 10,000 views on YouTube. That's crazy. So I think for by us, the time this right. comes out, we'll hit it. I mean, that, that's crazy. Yeah. Six weeks? I, I'm, <laughs> you guys have been awesome. Uh, that's my final word here. You guys have been great. I I love I love this community so far. Just keep on building it. Send you guys up. Until next time, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Episode seven will come next week. Hopefully, we hear about a USFL promo that does air during the Super Bowl. Stay tuned, folks. Have a good one.